Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Addressing concerns in the town of Trona. We'll have details on what officials and the community talked about during their town hall. Plus animal cruelty accusations against the California Living Museum. Details on what PETA is alleging about the local zoo. And a good morning to you. Thanks for tuning in to 23 ABC News at 430 on this Thursday. I'm Mike Hart. I'm Danielle Kernkamp. Let's get a quick check of your Thursday forecast. As you can probably feel the increase in temperatures after yesterday. Right. It still wasn't too bad. It was average yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And now we're upper 90s. Okay, so yesterday I was right. like, you know, Thursday maybe 100. I went 99 instead. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but we are heading into a higher, warming good for trend, you. right? So I do think we're going to head 100 in Arvin and Lamont. We have widespread Ooh. 100s down into the desert, and it's just a sign of things to come. Okay. So it's all thanks to that ridge of high pressure building over the Four Corners region. So you see that hot weather starting to dominate that ridge building over the area. We are sunny, stable, a bit hazy. Air quality is still in the moderate range, but a few points away from being unhealthy for sensitive groups. And look at how clear the entire state is. So as we were waking up this morning, we still have low 70s in Bakersfield, Lamont, and Arvin. Not bad. Mid-70s in Taft, Maricopa, and down into Mojave. Up in the Kern River Valley, 60s. Keene is also with those 60s, along with Lebec and Fraser Park. Tehachapi on the cool side at just 57 at this hour, but look at how we warm up later today. Tehachapi 87, mid-90s in the Kern River Valley. Here on the valley floor, there's that 99 for Bakersfield, 100 in Lamont and Arvin. Hot spot in the county, Ridgecrest at 107, and they're getting even hotter this weekend. We are too here in the valley, and we'll talk more about that coming up. But as for our roadways around Bakersfield, other than these ongoing construction projects, you're good to go. We begin this morning with the healing that's going on in the high desert community of Trona, following the tremors that rattled the area and FEMA getting ready to visit. Officials said the community gathered, officials and the community rather, gathered for a town hall on Wednesday. The small town didn't just get hit, they were near the epicenter for two of the largest quakes in recent years. San Bernardino Fire Department officials said more than 100 st structures have been deemed damaged, more than a dozen properties red flagged. And that's not the worst part. According to officials, two of the town's large water storage tanks were completely destroyed, and another can only be filled halfway. We need water in this town. They just said there's water hooked up, but I don't have water to my house in Argus. I think that sometimes we're a forgotten town out here. Tomorrow, FEMA will be heading to Trona to do a full assessment of all the different damage reports to figure out just how much funds will eventually be allocated. The communities of Trona and Ridgecrest are continuing to rebuild after back-to-back -back destructive earthquakes last week. The state now offering extended credit to people who've been impacted. The state compensation insurance fund is offering a 30-day credit extension to policyholders in Kern and San Bernardino counties. This comes as Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency in the affected areas. People with state insurance policies can request the extension by calling the number that you see on your screen, 888-782-8338. Ridgecrest Police says there will be a local assistance center set up starting today at the Kerr-McGee Evacuation Center. It's going to be open today through Sunday where state, local, and county resources are going to be available to those that have been impacted by the earthquakes. Families and businesses will have access to disaster assistance programs and services services all in one place. The local assistance center will be open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. at 100 West California Avenue. And if you'd like, you can go on turn to 23.com. We have a full list of all of the agencies that will be there. The American Red Cross of Kern County is hosting a Be Red Cross Ready presentation. It's focused on disaster preparedness at the Valley Baptist Church Fellowship Hall this weekend. The presentation will be held at the facility located at 4800 Fruitvale Avenue, running from 10 a.m. until noon this Saturday. Red Cross volunteers say becoming Red Cross ready for an emergency means following certain steps in advance to ensure you can weather a crisis safely and comfortably. For more information and, it, and preparedness tips, along with a link to register for the event, go to our website, turn to 23.com. This moment of human kindness is sponsored by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. A local business will be rolling up its sleeves and standing with Ridgecrest for a special event today. Salty's Barbecue is set to hold its Ridgecrest Strong Night Cruising event along with Diesel Mafia. It's happening from 4 this afternoon until 9 tonight at Salty's Barbecue on White Lane. They'll be collecting items needed by those impacted by the quakes, including things like toiletries, baby food, bottled water, and much more. Raffle 
tickets will be on sale for an opportunity to win a leather chair donated by R&D Leather Furniture. And Michelangelo's wood-fired pizza is rolling into Trona to help out the community there. The mobile pizza truck posting on Facebook saying they'll be at the Cumberland Presbyterian Church on Argus Avenue in Trona. They'll be serving food at 530 tonight. It will be for free for those in attendance. In other news, the California Living Museum has been accused by an animal rights group of animal cruelty following the deaths of several exotic animals in its care. The director of Captive Animal Law Enforcement at PETA said their call for concern came from a report that was released by the U.S. Department of Agriculture that pointed out two fisher cats named Taz and Lola that died as a result of flea infestations. The third animal, a skunk, referenced in the USDA report, reportedly died of starvation, which Calm says was not the case at their press conference. So the problem with Trigger was not that he starved to death. He was physically in good condition. What the necropsy did find was that he died of a virus that uh, he was not really showing too many symptoms of. Calm officials say it takes in more than a thousand wild animals each year that cannot be returned to the wild and they're always looking for ways to improve. According to the sheriff's office, because a formal complaint has been filed, KCSO will do a preliminary investigation. Sheriff's officials say, uh, tell 23 that if it does find anything during its investigation, the department will for forward those findings to the proper authorities. In your ag report, breeding more drought tolerant crops could be one in result of the genetic decoding of black eyed peas. Scientists at UC Riverside announced that they'd unraveled the crop's genetic code. Also known as cow peas, black eyed peas provide a staple source of protein in much of the world and they can tolerate drought and hot temperatures. Researchers say their work could ultimately help other crops acquire those traits. In other ag news, decisions that grape growers make could have a 25 year impact on their vines and engineers want to give farmers better information to help with those choices. Professors with Purdue University in Indiana have been working with California wine grape growers to help them adopt new technology. This project includes harnessing data growers can use to forecast how their decision might affect long term performance of the vineyards. Back here at home, there's a couple of opportunities for you to get some fresh produce during farmers markets this week. Adventist Health is hosting its farmers market later today. You can head out and purchase fresh fruits and veggies, eggs, dairy, and much more. There will also be some live music and health resources on hand. The event's happening from 5 to 7.30 tonight at Adventist Health's Chester Avenue location. It'll be happening in the parking lot across from the ambulance bay. And the Kern County Young Farmers and Ranchers is hosting its fifth annual charity farm Farmers Market this weekend. Plenty of produce that was grown locally will be available. Organizers say proceeds from this event benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of Lamont and Young Farmers and Ranchers projects. It's happening this Saturday from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Chewy's on Rosedale. So you have two opportunities to get some fresh fruits and veggies. Yes, which is always so great, right? And as we talk about whatever you're cooking for today, not a good day to turn on the oven and heat up the house. It's going to be solid weather for the next couple evenings because this high pressure is building and so everybody is sitting in this dry, very hot pattern. But let's talk quickly about potential tropical cyclone two. We have to call it that because it doesn't quite meet the criteria for a tropical storm just yet. It should be doing that later tonight. It's down in the Gulf of Mexico and it's creating flooding for those southern states paired with heat. We're talking about tornado risks and some other big factors there along with high winds as this wetter weather continues to spin on shore. So there are two different scenarios. The first is that it could head straight toward New Orleans. It's already dropped eight inches of rain there. We're talking another 10 to 20 inches on top of that. But then the other scenario takes it further off to the west. And so that would just miss New Orleans, but still give them some very wet weather. So you're going to hear a lot of talk about that over the next couple days, especially tonight into tomorrow. But for us, we're just calm and clear. There's not much to talk about other than heat from 71. Now we get to 99 later today in Baker sold 101 tomorrow, 106 on Saturday. We'll talk more about that heat for the weekend coming up. Still to come on 23 battling cancer through a new app. Details on how this application helps you to eat the right foods that will battle your particular disease. Plus, celebrating the summer with a new drink at Starbucks. Details on this colorful concoction and how long it'll be available. Coming up next. 
Welcome back. It is 442 and an interesting update coming in from the CHP. They say that a car was speeding possibly 100 miles an hour or faster earlier this morning when it was involved in a wreck. There are several cars involved in this on the southbound five just past the junction there. So it is right near the exit of Laval Road. You can see how traffic is backed way up in those southbound lanes crawling at about 20 miles an hour. We're unsure if there are any injuries here or any fatalities potentially, but you will see a lot of slowing there. That third lane is blocked. So when you're counting the lanes, it reads like a book left to right. Number one is always the fast lane, then two, then three. That third lane is the one that is blocked as you're getting southbound. Once you get past Wheeler Ridge area and past Laval Road, it does start to open back up. In health news, more research suggests sugary drinks can cause cancer. A new study found people who drink 100 milliliters of sugary drinks each day get cancer 18% more often than those who don't. 100 milliliters is equivalent to one third of a can of soda. A few examples of sugar drinks are soda, pure fruit juice, energy drinks, or even a sports drink. This study did not link diet drinks to cancer. It's important to remember the study's observational. That means it did not prove that the sugary drinks caused the cancer. And an app that works while you sleep is helping to identify foods that help prevent or fight cancer. It's called Dream Lab, and so far it has 83,000 downloads, and it's performed 10 million calculations. The app identified carrots, celery, oranges, grapes, cabbage, and dill as having the most anti-cancer properties. Researchers hope to use this information to formulate new cancer treatments. They say that it's still a long ways away. The research also found existing diabetes and antimicrobial drugs could have anti-cancer properties. Several hamburgers and hot dog bun brands have been recalled due to a plastic choking hazard. Flower Foods bakery items are sold to top retailers, including Walmart, Sam's Clubs, Aldi, and others. The company says small pieces of hard plastic may be in some of the products and could pose a choking risk. No illnesses or injuries have been reported. The brand names include Clover Valley, Great Value, Laura Lynn, Nature's Own, Piggly Wiggly, and Wonder. In consumer news, Uber's conversation-free car trips will be expanding. The company made the announcement on Tuesday. The Comfort Trip offers a personalized choice on legroom, temperature, and now driver interaction. Uber also announced the start of its new helicopter service called Ubercopter. Ubercopter initially will offer an eight-minute trip from Manhattan to JFK International Airport on weekdays during afternoon rush hour. One-way tickets will cost about $200. It's a summer in a cup at Starbucks. The coffee chain offering a special tie-dye frappuccino for the next four days, as long as supplies last. The icy blended drink is available only at participating stores in the United States and Canada. It's made of a tropical cream frappuccino base with dashes of red beets, turmeric, and spiru Danielle? spirulina. Spirulina. Yes, and it's topped with whipped cream and a final dusting of colored powder. Each 16 ounce serving carries a whopping 400 calories, 60 grams of carbs, and 58 grams of sugar. Ooh. You know what? If you don't like it, it's only here for four days. So, oh. oh. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, entertainment news. Breaking Bad fans are disappointed after believing a show reunion might have been in the works. What? In a couple of vague social media posts. See, that's this is my thing. They're vague, so they could just be trying to fool everybody. Breaking Bad stars Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul announced an upcoming collaboration. So people started thinking the pair were going to announce a Breaking Bad related project. That's the series on AMC that went off the air in 2013. It wasn't meant to be. Cranston and Paul were actually working on a new brand of Mezcal. Hmm. <laughs> The two said they came up with the idea of the specialty mezcal a couple years ago while drinking it. Oh. So they were doing other bad things. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Taylor Swift, hey, she's shaking off all other celebrities after being named the top earning celebrity by Forbes. That's right, the Money Magazine says that music star pulled in $185 million over the past year. Thanks mostly to her touring and other things. Apparently it's her highest earning year yet. Number two, cosmetics queen Kylie Jenner with 170 million. Isn't she involved in some kind of controversy or something? Isn't Doesn't matter. she always? Her brother-in-law, Kanye, yeah, third with 150 million. Oh. See, Kylie controversy. See, it rhymes. See, Kylie 
Kanye controversy. Kardashian controversy. That sounds right. <laughs> Elena it, Elex Excellent or something. Right? I'm over there furiously typing. I was trying to post that oh. uh, crash onto our Twitter page oh, okay. so that you can follow the updates and see what's going on there, see the speeds. But a lot of slowing southbound on the 5 near Laval Road if you're just joining us. More on that traffic segment in a minute. But we want to talk about our weather headlines because that warming trend continues today. Temperatures are rising above average. That means 90s for most of the valley, the Kern River Valley, and widespread 100s down into the desert. With this valley, air quality is getting worse because this is sinking stable air. So it's moderate today, but we expect it to become unhealthy for sensitive groups by tomorrow and last that way, getting worse all weekend long as this heat wave dominates valley temperatures Saturday into Sunday, 103 to 108, depending on which city you're in. So here's the warming trend already beginning. We're up by several degrees from this time yesterday. Yesterday was a nice average day today, just a little bit warmer, but still we can handle it. It's July, right? So 90s aren't out of the question. 60s and 70s to wake up to this morning here in the valley and down into the desert area. You have 60s for most of the mountains, but 50s still in Tatchby, Bear Valley and Pine Mountain Club. As this high pressure dominates, look at how it warms us up, really taking hold tomorrow as the 100s come back for Bakersfield. Saturday is the hottest day of this trend, and then we'll slowly start to see that high pressure breaking down and moving out. So we go from 99 to 101 to 106, back to 104, back to 101. This is our second heat wave of the season, a very hot weekend ahead, so make sure that you're high hydrating, taking care of your skin, checking on your elderly neighbors who may not be able to afford their air conditioning and so they try to kind of power through and this is very hard on them. We have the upper 90s by the middle of the week that is on track for average, possibly a cooling trend. Nothing very cool about 96, but if that would be below average heading into next week, let's hope that pattern holds. Now into the current River Valley 90s today and tomorrow, still trying to get to that triple digit mark on Saturday. Tatch me and Fraser Park, some 80s today, 90s back by tomorrow. Saturday and Sunday, both very hot for you and then slowly falling next week. Still to come on 23 ABC on your marks, get set and go. Details on the special race that these little guys are practicing <laughs> for. <laughs> Plus you have a chance to score a free Slurpee today because it's 7-11. We'll tell you what the big occasion is coming up next. Today, of course, is July 11, 7-Eleven. So what better way to celebrate this day than by getting a free treat at a 7-Eleven store? The world's largest convenience retailer is celebrating its birthday, but instead of cake, they're giving away free Slurpees. So you'll get a cute Instagram worthy cup that comes along for free and great deals on food. The party is from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. while supplies last. Well, you can also enjoy a different beverage today because it's National Mojito Day. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> a little celebration in here. Uh, time to party. Yeah, and appreciate the delicious minty drink. The mojito, of course, hails from Cuba. It's basically the Cuban version of a highball. Do you know that? No. Yeah, it's made with white rum, sparkling water, sugar or simple syrup, lime juice, and of course the mint. You gotta grind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one's exactly sure who made the first mojito. I think it was my dad. Uh, it can actually trace its roots back, <laughs> well then it's not my dad, because back to the 16th century. <laughs> Some say it was a favorite drink of pirates. All right, what's certain is the sweet sugar, the tart citrus, and the mint create a refreshing combination that's perfect for the heat of summer. That sounds delicious. There you go. Some speedy dachshunds in Southern California spent some time practicing for a pretty big event this weekend. And they're, so they're off. Cute. The 24th running of the Wiener Schnitzel <laughs> Wiener Nationals will be held Saturday, July 20th at the Los Alamitos race course. Up to 100 dogs were chosen based on the creativity of their entry applications. Wednesday was practice, but on race day, they'll compete in 10 50 yard trial heats. Those winners then face off in the championship run. We do it for fun. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on her, but she loves to race. She loves to play. This is very interesting for other dogs to be involved because you can't ever predict what's going to happen with a wiener dog. <laughs> Proceeds raised by the Wiener Dog Races will go to the Seal Beach Animal Care Center. It's a nonprofit group helping stray animals in the Orange County area. I could watch those videos all day. Right? They're all having day so much fun. Long. Uh, let's talk about our weather. I don't like watching this. We are sunny and stable. So temperatures are just above average today. Not bad. 60s and 70s for most of the county. Still 50s in Tatchby, Bear Valley, and Pine Mountain Club at this hour. But as we climb up later today in Bakersfield, 99 tomorrow, 101. Saturday, 106 in that forecast. We do have some 
some locations like Arvin and Lamont that could get to 108 that afternoon. A slow fall, but still hot at 104 Sunday, 101 Monday, and then kind of hovering around that average line with some 90s next week. Sunshine across the board. Still to come in our next hour, search and rescue volunteers saying a body was recovered from the Kern River. We're going to have details on the latest discovery near Hart Park yesterday. Plus, the president gearing up to hold a social media summit at the White House. Details on who's scheduled to attend. All that and much more when we return for 23 ABC News at 5 a.m.